The Overcomer Series Season 3 is brought to you by Johnil Alcock, MBF Group Limited, Scripture Trinkets by AP. We see each other many times by our titles, careers, or how we look physically. But behind each face, there's a story to tell about triumph over trial. We can also learn how God has brought us to where we are by His supreme grace and goodness. Let's explore the lives and testimonies of some amazing humans on the Overcomers series. This week on the Overcomers series. Hi, good night. Welcome to another episode of the Overcomers series. And I'm so pleased to have with me tonight, Marcella Brown Ferron. She is a beautiful lady who has a very interesting story to tell about moving in her life to improve in her resources and you know just do some things in business how are you doing marshall i'm doing great i'm doing great i'm doing great all right great 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 so marshall before we get into the nitty-gritty of the story tell us a little bit about yourself who is marshall brown ferrell oh very interesting question who am i of course you said it right i'm marshall brown friend i could stop it right there <laughs> But um, to describe myself, I would say I'm, I'm strong. Um, I am determined and I am, I'm strong, determined and love people. I'm strong in the sense that for me, I'm not easily bent. I'm not easily, I don't give up easily. Um, determined to become my best self, determined to see myself the way God sees me, always moving ahead, determined to change this, the, my, my circle. Um, my circle includes my family, my sibling, and those around me. Whatever way I can or I can do to um, just to make them better, to support and to motivate, I will do that. And I love people. So for me, anything to improve persons around me, I'm going to do it. Um, for me, doesn't matter how people will put title on people and label them and see them as just ordinary. For me, I see everybody as unique and special. And so even the garbage collector will smile with them. You know, the person on the road that is selling juice. You know, I will, I will just, for me, one thing I always say, when I meet person, I treat them in a manner that when I get to know who they are personally, I'm not embarrassed of myself. You know, sometimes you meet some people and you, you, you casually, you know, respond to them. And then when you maybe get to know them a little bit, you say, oh, I didn't know that who you were for me. When I get to know that, I would say, well, I, I was, I was, I'm pleased to know that at first I treat you well or, you know, I react in a manner that, you, uh, that is respected. So that's pretty much why I'm in a nutshell. That's great. That's brilliant. That's so okay. thank you so much, Marcella, for all of the things that you just spoke to me about. Why was it important for you to start to develop this sense of determination and, in your words, not easily bent? All right. I would say my upbringing. Um, when you're from a large family, usually when I talk about my brothers and sisters, I said I have a whole heap of brothers and sisters because I have a whole lot. When you're from a large family, when resources are short, always short, because it has to be it has to stretch to to feed everybody or to everybody to get a bit. Um, when you have a father who's a drunkard and spends the money drinking, drinking, drink, drinking, and you know, squander the rest of it, and you have a mother who's a housewife who have to tend to the kids out of nothing, um, it teach you a lot. It teach you how to um, to be creative. It teach you how to make much out of nothing and it, it it teach you how much important everything is so we don't waste stuff we um anything that we get you have to make the best of, of it so for me strong in the sense that every opportunity i get 
I'm going to move at it. I'm not going to make it pass. I'm going to move at it and make the best of it. So I think poverty for me is, is good and it's bad. It's bad because we lack so much. We were deprived. We were labeled in our community because of who we were. And, and so it was a bad sense. It taught me a lot though, because it taught me drive and determination. It pushes me to want to become something better. It pushes me to persons who will label us and see us as nothing or as under, that we are gonna become something. And when they see us, they even know when they look at us, persons can't believe that this is who we were before then. So it teaches me strength and determination and resilience. And even now when I look at a, a, a number of young people and see how they're easily pushed around and bent and soak up different different stuff. And for me, it's, it's like nothing. This is the, the this is what poverty teaches me. It teaches me that there is more and I need to push towards that. What area of the country did you come from? Well, I'm from the remote co um, parish of St. Catherine. So I'm from Brownsall. Um, small district, but um, you know, th there are some very powerful persons that come from that district as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be come from that community as well. Mm. So when you go back currently, what sort of um, words do persons say to you there? And uh, I mean, what sort of things are they doing compared to you in, in their lives? The truth is, you know, in my community, there it when you when you look around you when i was growing up you didn't know the extent of poverty that that's what it is you know that you're lack you know that you didn't have much because others had and you didn't have but looking back you realize the intensity of the poverty that exists when you leave school and you see everybody still in the community um some become you know smokers some become drink and um, begin to drink rum and others doing nothing not good, not doing anything to go back to school you realize that there must be something that you know you can do and for me in the, there's hardly anybody in the community where i can where i can say i would look up to or persons who can look for forward to, to, to see as a role model of, of such so you, you had to look outside so I, I don't know what was in me from then to say that, Marcella, you have to do something different. You have to step out. And thank God for the grace of God, because um, I accepted the Lord um, at, at an early age. Of course, I've backslidden and, you know, went out and came back into church. But from then, I believe that the Lord has hidden me somewhere and has created a path for me. And so that is what kept me and pulled me out of that. So when I go back in my community now and person see me, people are, they are so proud of me. Um, per, per se looking at me to see well boy you know you come back in the community um people look up to you as a role model they see you boy oh you look nice you come from foreign and you know you have, it's you, all those things so, you know of course you're, you're gonna have those who will stretch their hands and begging and all of those things but for the most part you know when you go back and and, and you're able to to represent per se the community it gives a, a, a look because of course of where you would have been and and what you where, where am i now Yes. Isn't it always good to be able to give back to those who assisted you to reach where you are? And I'm um, sure you're just telling a piece of the story and there's some of that in there. But apart from that, this term not easily bent. You know what came to me? That life will present itself to you, just as you have said. And over time, you will get bent though. Don't, won't you? But not easy. What happens is, <laughs> I've tried to find something that I can. <laughs> but, but what happens, this is my glasses case. But what happens is, you, you don't have to be broken by it. You can adjust and adapt. So yeah. you, you may have a little punch here and then you come back and you fix it back up to what it was. Or it even breaks and cracks, but you repair it so that, yes, you have that feeling of the things that happened in your past. Right. But you learn from it. Right. And you allowed it to push you into even greater things than you thought was possible. Isn't that right? Right, right. right. Definitely. Right. So, Definitely. Right. So, Marcello, thank you so much for that quick introduction. Guys, if you're enjoying this episode, please do. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, there's always a live chat section to the right hand side 
off your screen on your Facebook or YouTube um, settings that you are on your laptop or your computer. If you're on your phone, more than likely it's somewhere below us where we're speaking. Please do put in the comments. We want to hear from you. We want to see what you think about Marshall and her journey and also about the Overcomer series in general. Please do stay tuned. We have a quick word from one of our sponsors. And when we come back, we hear more from Marcella and her story of from poverty to more greatness. Soon come. Reach out to MBF Group Limited, owners and operators of Ferrance Exquisite Photo Studio and Business Services for all your photography and videography needs. They're the best for your weddings, graduations, and funerals. They also design and print business cards, flyers, invitations, and personalized items such as t-shirts, cups, and logo stitches. Reach out to Marshalla Brown Ferron on 876-327-8912. Welcome back. We are here seated with Marshalla Brown Ferron. And she's telling us a story about growing up in, in the more rural areas of St. Catherine. For those who are streaming in from other places around the world, apart from Jamaica or the Caribbean, who may know a little bit about Jamaica, please know that it's just an area that is not as metropolitan or suburban as the places that most people know in Jamaica, like Kingston or Montego Bay. Marcella. So what was your path now to find a way to get some things out of life? What started to inspire you? What paths did you take in terms of mentorship? How did you move forward? All right, interestingly, Daniel, um, I remember this one woman in my district that she grew up in the district and she had a good job, all right? So she left the community and she would normally come back and she drives and you know come back you know when you come back in in your community you see somebody who is from the community and they come back looking well off drive and all of that and how the community treats you i always tell myself i want to be like her i want to be able to drive back to my community and you know to be able to look and have that kind of feeling so she was always this person i look up to i mean it was limited at the time because i didn't know a lot about her but for me I always have some great friends, always have great friends, normally encourage me, push me towards becoming. And so aligning myself with these people, always sending me to more. So having gotten a job um, initially um, growing up, and of course my first job was working at a hardware store. And I, I, I grew up the ladder from there, I left and I worked um, in the money industry. I work at the Cambio, I work at Western Union. And when I left Western Union, I... Um, I actually got a, the, a big opportunity to actually manage a business. Now, that was a good opportunity for me because I was able to, to start up the company. I, well, at, at the time, I thought I was only going to manage the company. But having been interviewed, the boss decided to, have to, to keep me at the time and to have me get the different thing that he needs to start the company, um, get the staff in, in, in place, you know, get the license from Bank of Jamaica and do all of that that was good for me because it gave me a lot of experience in starting up a company and that job grew well, i stayed there for a good while and until i left and interestingly the next company i worked with i did the same thing start the company doing the management duties but there was something interesting about working for you know a, a managing company i realized that even though i would have had a number of skill sets to be able to manage this business there is your 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 whatever ideas you have whatever thing that you you know you would put forward as as a manager and say you know these are the things that you think that would would make the company progress or move forward you're limited to the bosses um to say well yes or put it in place so i realized i became i, be, I began to be, become uncomfortable you know working um the nine to five and so i of course, at my last job, I, I finished up my degree. I did some um, studies in human resource management. Thought that I was going to be doing some training and development. But of course, an opportunity came up. There was a location closing down. And um, my sister told me about it and said, you know, Shella, uh, this place used to be here. I used to work there. 
um, is that they, with a photo steward at the time, and they're going to give it up. She think that is a good opportunity to, to maintain the business because the area needed it at the time. So I say, you know what? Um, let me jump on it. I remember thinking about it, praying about it, and told my pastor about it. And that Sunday, he prayed, we prayed, and there was a word, and I decided, and God, and, 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 and the word said, Go in bold faith. And when I got that word, I knew it was okay. And, I, and that is where I started out um, as a businesswoman, and the rest is history. Today, you know, we're um, operating. Uh, I'm operating a photo studio and print tree. We're doing graphic design and personalized service and offering a number of um, business to the community in which we serve in the community of Spanish on all our road. Brilliant. And um, what's the name of that business? It's actually Ferron's Exquisite Photo Studio. Um, we have now re-established the business um, in our 10th anniversary. So it's actually now called MBF Group. Brilliant. What's business like? Wow. So even though I, I, I talk about how I get here, it, it, it didn't came here just like that. It's a whole lot of work. Now, when we started out, it feels like a little hobby. Why? Because we, it was so little that was happening there at the time um it was still it feels still like feel, still feel like a dream and wondering where it is going trying to get the support from family to get it done um but i was determined to to be something different and to do something different there's one thing about me that i always don't whenever whenever i do something it's not just for me i want to be able to impact others so when it when when i decided to push out and to start this business i was not thinking about me earning at the time I wanted to set an example for my family and those around me so much that this is what drives me to get it done. So it took us a while to kick off, to get things going, to start to even earning. But I feel good doing it because I'm saying that, you know, when people from my community sees this, it feels good to know that somebody from your community can, is able to do something like this in terms of, you know, going out there, starting a business. I feel that it, it, other persons or other young people in the community will see that a motivation for them to say that, you know what, if Marcella, who is from here, this kind of life, a, 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 come up such a poor background, a family like this can do this. I feel like this can encourage them to, to say that there's no limitation as to what you can do, but you know, you can do it too. So initially it was it was rough. Um, one of, one of, one of, one of, one of, when I started out, I didn't have no experience none at all zero nada of photography and printry but yet of course i started a business in it i tell people that um i'm qualified by god and he's the one which actually trained me to do everything so to date i've not gone to a school to learn photography i've not gone to a school to learn graphic design or anything that we have been doing now and up to this morning um last week saturday i did a, i did a, a photo shoot for a lady and she said, you know what, the, the photograph looks so lovely, Miss Fern. Uh, you have never disappointed in, when I recommend you. And these are the comments I, I get. And it makes me feel good to know that, you know what, I step up by faith and God is doing absolutely everything else. You have never done any sort of photography or graphic Training. design course. Training, is not at all. Who is the primary, um, I guess you could say, technical person who does the underground photos and graphics or do you have like team members well i have well i have a team working with me now so of course i have a staff uh, four staff working um doing different stuff i still do all the elements of the business as well but i, I mainly manage now so for, but for, for every, anybody who comes there i'm the person who actually train them and develop them into into getting into the standard of how we deliver our services that's fascinating um how did you manage the doubts in your mind? You, you said that you used yourself thinking that you could be a good example for others. But there must have been doubts. There must have been worries. You know, maybe you feel maybe you're trying to do something and you lose some income and you can't take care of yourself. What words did you use to encourage you? And what ways did you go into your mind to still push forward despite how it looked? I mean, there are a lot. 
<laughs> there are so so many kind of about person start out business they are thinking of course you have to be an expertise you have to have all the resources you have to have so much things intact in certain way we didn't have it all together we learn along the way and that's why i'm saying that god is the one who actually just built building up over the years so no, a number of things that that happen it it can't it 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 it, it we transition into over time we learn them we grow and we adjust and we move on but when it comes to um the business in terms of pushing forward um there are a number of of, of things that we we, we we thought would have show, shown us off in, in terms of curve you know in, in our thing but for, for the business we actually have a standard that we go by and 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 we pride ourselves as offering quality service to customer maintaining a standard of excellence and consistency but so those are something that we stand on so that we can remain now so in terms of doubting um yes there are times that we feel pressure like this can't work sometimes we feel like okay the market um boy things are 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 are, are not in our favor in terms of when competition happen in the area and stuff but for me my why is always there the reason why i started out this is always there and because i'm determined to to be different and to make a difference those around me it doesn't matter what happened i'm not going to stop i'm not going to stop so when the earners come when i feel like boy the money is not there to pay the bills when i feel like boy we have to to cut back on this and cut on that whatever i need to do I try and make the adjustment i mean the, the business operated a number of years that i mentioned it initially on my expense because I didn't get paid initially. So all that I earned, I put it back in the business. So in order for it to grow, in order for it to, 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 to earn the kind of status, for it to become also a name for us, for, for us to be strong in the customer mind as, as, as to who we are as a company. So it takes a lot out of me in terms of pushing and pulling. But as I said before, my why is always there. I know why I started it. I know the reason why. I know that God is with me and he never leaves and so, that is what kept me even when the truck went when when they um when 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 trials come. Yes, trials must come. Thank you so much for sharing that, Marcello. You know, some people don't get this that you have to have a strong, determined, right. um, unwavering why. Yeah. It is what will push you and cause you to still stay dedicated despite whatever it is that is around you. Uh, and another thing which struck me about what you you said was the the nature of how you, you you know you had to just adapt and do some things you you got this business you had the idea that it could work but you obviously had to learn on the go on the go <laughs> learn on the some go persons don't on want on to go. do that or they're afraid of doing that because of many things one they yeah. think they may fail right two when you try new things and it doesn't work it leaves an unsettling feeling in your mind and in your stomach the fear of that, the unknown. yeah the unknown of it as if you're not good enough scripture trinkets by ap for all your unique tokens and gifts check out our line of car trinkets keyring trinkets fridge magnets christmas ornaments custom trinkets and plaques, and much more. Go ahead, pick the perfect gift and share the word boldly. What are your words to people who may be watching, wanting to do something different, or maybe doing something now, but trying to find their way? What are your words for them? Tell them something positive right now. If for anybody who wants to do, just, just do it. Um, All the variables around you may not be seen what people would ascribe it to be but if you know that if, if if you are passionate about what you want to do if you have your why or the reason why you'd want to do it go and do it um situation is gonna always come people is gonna always say that you can't do it um but you have to to know that this is what you want to do and not give up i mean some people go into business and think that okay then um, after one month, two months, even a year, you're going to be start making and booming and making lots of profit and able to live and go on your weekend and buy a nice car. It takes time. It takes work. But once you put in the work, once you're determined, it will not fail you. So I encourage anybody just, just go out and do it. Be determined. 
do not um a lot of persons going into business again the next thing is that um they expect that okay then um because it's your business you can slack off and don't go in one day stay home the next day and you can you, you, you don't put in amount of time it's the same discipline that you'd put in to work for a nine to five it's your business put in extra and even more to push it so that it will, will in, in, uh, begin to serve you so for me initially there was a lot that i had to put in i deny myself a whole lot just to ensure that it is floating it's consistent just to ensure that my staff i can always maintain them i can't tell you this much um Janiel, that i mean you would have known of course covid two years a lot of business would have closed down a lot closed down and we were able to actually employ two staff we were able to change we, we, we were able to adjust to the, the to the environment we see different markets that we can tap into we are able to see different things that we could have done and didn't do in the past and and, and, and jump on it you now based on the different technologies and now we're able to stay afloat being consistent in what we're offering and, and even adding new customers to our to, to our to our um catalog log each day so it, it, it is rough out there, the company is high, and as a woman in the business, it takes a lot to really push and to earn the kind of, um, you know, you know, you know, status out, out there. I mean, small business is, it is itself too is hard because um, the resources that you would need to push and the, the, you know, different loans or whatever you want to really get you off, you may not get it out there and you have to make the sacrifice to push to get it out there, but it's worth it, it's worth it. Yeah and um you you raise another good point about the finances yeah this is what many people fear that when you yeah. start out it may not exactly go and you just start making in jamaican terms a bag of money right away yeah and you have to put some investment in it and as soon as you get the money the majority of the time you're putting it back in the business to invest in the business for it to grow what tips of advice can you give to persons during this rough time now to show or say why it is you were able to still hire people and still keep your business afloat right for us when we realized that this would have been a new reality i had to go on the join board because we were operating on this momentum now realize that different kind of thing now so there's a lot of adjustment we had to make in terms of how we serve our customers, new ways to serve them, new ideas how we can do business, a new platform that we can use, new business opportunity, a new market we can tap into. We have to look, we look at all of those things and see where we are and what we can do. And so that's what I want to say to, to other persons. They are, just be creative. Come out of the box or the mold that, you know, would have, oh, would have been operating before and look outside to see how we can do things differently and for us that is what we are we were able to do and to adjust ourselves so that we can we would have been able to make to maintain so the new realities we, we are we have understand our new realities this is what we, we have to work with use the different realities to be creative and just get out of that space and just get going get creative get out of that box and that space that you're in and keep going Marcella, you are you're like a breath of fish here. I hope everybody is enjoying themselves. Please, if you have any questions, put them in the chat. If you're on your computer or on your tablet, it's usually to the right of the screen. And you can type in anything you want in the live chat area there. Or if you're on your phone, it's usually down below here. Any questions from myself or Marcella about business, about entrepreneurship, about motivation to do well in uh, some sort of small enterprise that you are working on also remember that we are streaming uh every other week every week so you're gonna see this next episode another week and another week and another week for quite a while please do remember to stay tuned and ash marshall was talking about adapting and readjusting to some things you will see a little banner behind her I'm going to get in deeper to ask some questions about what that is. You may see it saying trending with Shella. But we have to go to a commercial break. So come. Here's what's coming up next. On the Overcomers series, season three, 
I have overcome the world. I, when I see the difference, I have known where I want to be and I want to be over this side. So whatever it takes me, um, I'm going to do it. I've never jumped the gun. I've never stepped on anybody. I mean, of course, I have, I have, I have good and bad time, but I've never jumped the gun or tried to, to do anything out of, you know, norm to, to get where I want to. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of grace and everything to get there. And it's not easy. It's hard. It's hard, but giving up, it wasn't an option and it will not be an option for me. Join us next week for another inspiring and thought-provoking discussion. And remember, you are an overcomer because Jesus said, In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world.